We um, glad to have our home folks with us in the service this morning. We're glad to have our business with us in the service this morning, and and hope and pray that you'll come back and be with us. And sometimes when you have visitors for special occasions, you have your, some of your home folks go and they visit somewhere else. So uh, may the Lord bless them as well. Uh, today is a Memorial Day weekend, but like I said about last Sunday, Sunday was last Sunday was homecoming. And, uh, but it was also Pentecost Sunday. Um, so if you have your Bibles, why don't you turn to the book of Acts. How many loves the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to the book of Acts. I want you to turn to chapter 2. I am not going to try to scare anybody to death this morning, right? Two fifteen and 16. I heard something else the other day, too. There was a game going on. There weren't many people there. And they piped in some, they piped in the backdrop. There was a lot of people there. People began to come out, you know, because they thought there was a big crowd there. Well, finally there was. I'm going to have to pipe in some amens, some hallelujahs. Thank you, Jesus. Have me a button installed right here where I think I said something decent from the Lord. I don't know how to say amen. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm going to preach the title, and Joel's going to put it up there. And if you keep in notes, you need to get a piece of paper right quick and a pen. The Holy Ghost, He's that. And much, much more. And even I started to put this at the end of the title. He's that and much, much more than that. The office work of the Lord Jesus Christ as a sinner's savior and friend has been clearly defined and accepted by Christians everywhere. Even now, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father and he is making intercession for us. In the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Colossians in chapter 3 and verse 1, we read these words. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then in the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Sad to say, however, that there are a lot of Christians that do not understand the work of that of the Holy Ghost. No doubt, many can truthfully say, as Acts 19 and 2 says, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. In a very special sense, this is the dispensation when the Holy Ghost is doing His greatest work in and through the church. And just let me just tell you this. It is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of that of the Holy Ghost that is holding this world together right now. Had it not be for the church, and had it not be for the Holy Ghost, things would be a lot worse than what they are. From the fall, from the fall of Adam to the birth of that of Christ, God the Father worked among men. Hebrews 1 and 1. God, who at sundry times in divers manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. From the birth of Jesus to the cross, God the Son worked on earth. 
Matter of fact, after his resurrection, he would also work upon this earth for 40 more days. Hebrews 1 and 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. By the way, you, you, you hear the term, the last days? The last days have been upon us ever since the first coming of that of Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews was written in the year A.D. 64. Amen? And we have been living in the last days for nearly now 2,000 years. From Pentecost to the rapture of the church... God the Holy Ghost works in and through the church. The Feast of Pentecost took place 50 days after the Feast of the First Fruits. The word Pentecost means 50th. Just as Passover is a picture of the death of the dead of Christ, and First Fruits is a picture of the resurrection of the dead of Christ, so Pentecost pictures the coming of that of the Holy Ghost. The believers were waiting and they were praying as Christ had commanded. And at the proper time, the Holy Ghost descended. When He did, He baptized them in, into a spiritual body in Christ. And He filled them with power for witnessing. Just let me tell you this. People make up different denominations but I believe that there are some good people in just about every denomination. But I believe that there are individuals that are part of the body of Christ in just about every denomination under that of heaven. And while we separate and divide ourselves, we are one in the body of that of Jesus Christ. In Acts 2 and 2, the Bible says, There came from heaven a sound of a rushing mighty wind. It reminds us of the conversation Jesus had with Nicodemus in John 3 and 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. How many remembers Ezekiel's vision of the valley of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37 and 9? Then said he unto, he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, and no breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Look at verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. The believers spoke in tongues. The tongues of fire, the Bible tells us, more or less was a picture of divine power to speak for God. They did not preach, though the apostle Peter would preach a little bit later, but when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they praised God. They praised God in languages that they did not naturally know. Apparently they were in the upper room when the Holy Ghost descended. But they moved from that of the upper room, and they moved into the temple court, courts where there was a great crowd that was gathered. And one of the purposes of the gift of tongues was to impress the Jews with the fact that a miracle had just taken place. In Acts 2 and 4, not only did his 120 Jews speak with tongues as proof of the coming of the Holy Ghost, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But in Acts 10 and 46, the Gentiles spoke with tongues as proof to the apostles that they had received the Spirit. The Holy Ghost was given to the Gentile believers, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Also in Acts 19 and 6, the Ephesian apostles of John the Baptist spoke in tongues for the same reason. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now, while speaking in tongues 
is the initial evidence of the reception of the Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Can I tell you this? There is so much more to the Holy Ghost. I should have got an amen about right then. I believe the Holy Ghost proceeded from the Father and from the Son and is of one substance in majesty and glory with the Father and the Son. Very eternal God. He is the administrator over the affairs of the Godhead, Godhead down here on this earth. How many believes in the Father? How many believes in the Son? And how many believes in the Holy Ghost? How many believes in the triune Godhead? Three persons. They're three, but yet they're one. There's not but one God, but it's made of three different parts, of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Father worked back in the Old Testament, but when Jesus was born and lived his life and died and was resurrected and for dead of 40 days showed himself by many infallible proofs, then there was the work of that of Christ. But when Jesus Christ ascended and prayed to the Father on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came back. And we are living in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. And let me just put emphasis on this. There are too many denominations that does not put enough emphasis on that of tongues and don't want to talk about tongues, but there are too many homeless people that put too much emphasis on tongues. There's a whole lot to the Holy Ghost. He's that, and he is much, much more than that. Now, would you like to hear just a little bit of what he is? Anybody? Here's where you start, need to start keeping up with notes. The Holy Ghost does what I call the five C's. He convicts, he convinces, he converts, he controls, and he comforts. He convicts, he convinces, he converts, he controls, and he comforts. First of all, let's go to he convicts. How many remembers after Pentecost that the apostle Peter stands up? You remember that? And the other 11 apostles stand up with him. And he's in the, out, in the outer court. He got away from the upper room. And now he's preaching to the masses. And his sermon is this. Jesus is Lord and Christ. Joel's prophecy now has been fulfilled. The work of Jesus proved that he is Lord and that he is Christ. David himself foretold of the Messiah's kingship after the resurrection. His resurrection proves that he is Lord and that he is Christ. And he comes to an end of his sermon with the conclusion of this, what Israel must do. Do you remember what, how they responded? Joy's going to pull up a verse of scripture. When they heard this, when they heard that they had taken and crucified the Messiah, the Son of God, though died now resurrected on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Do you know what the Holy Ghost did? He convicted them. He convicted them, Ormond. You have taken, you have crucified the Son of God. And they felt guilty and condemned and were convicted in their heart. Then what must we do? to be saved. Did you know that is a work 
And that's what the Holy Ghost does. He is more than just speaking in tongues. He convicts an individual of that of their sin. But not only does he convict, but he also does this. He convinces. The three-fold work, work of the Holy Ghost is in John 16 and 8. When he has come, he will reprove the world of dead of sin. That is just one. In other words, he will not only convict, but he will also convince. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, seeks to press home to the heart and the conscience, the truth, regarding the state of that of man and the sight of that of God. The Holy Ghost not only convicts, but he convinces. You see, listen to this. No man can come unto God unless he's drawn by the Spirit. And that is part of his job. And I would like to say work more than that of job. But after he brings conviction to us and he convinces us, then you know what he does? He converts us. And to convert means to change from one form into another is to persuade. It's to change in policy or in that of religion. In John 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of that of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of that of God. In the Sermon on the Mount, we have the child text in Matthew 18 and 3. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of that of heaven. And that's what he does. He convicts. He convinces. And he converts. He changes. I looked this up the other day. I just had a concern about it. I, I, don't you listen to this. According to evangelism statistics... 85% of people that are Christians became a Christian between the age of 4 and 14. Eighty. Turn me up, Joy. I want to be heard. If I get be heard too much, turn me down. Eighty. Five percent of people that are Christians got saved in a wonder called the 414. Eighty-five percent. If your mama and daddy were Christians, you got saved at the age of 12. If you had parents that were not Christians, you got saved on an average of 16. And from then to 30, 10% became Christians. I got saved at the age of 20. You know what? If you add those two together, can you add 85 together with 10? Somebody? 95% of people that become Christians are Christians before the age of 30. Parents, that should send you a message and tell you something. If you got young people, you better try to get them to the Lord. Is anybody hearing me out here? If you got some young people, you better do your best to try to get them to the Lord. And if you're older and you don't know the Lord, you better try to make your way to the Lord. Am I doing okay? Just let me throw this out and I go on. 
How many remember some of the old forefathers when they were praying for somebody that was lost? You remember how they prayed? God, send the hounds of hell on their heels. How many remembers that? Something down those lines. You know what they were praying for? They were praying that you would fall under conviction and the Holy Ghost would convince you and the Holy Ghost what would do what? Change you, convert you. But that ain't all. He also controls you when he comes. Preacher, how do you know that? I know why. Because if you go back to Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came, look at the latter part, he sat upon them. I got news for you. When somebody's sitting on me, they in control. And can I tell you something else he does? Y'all ain't in a hurry to leave, are you? You gonna get off tonight? He comforts. He comforts. There's some things some of y'all know about me and some things y'all don't know about me. I don't like to stand in front of a congregation and just spew out my personal life. But can I tell you, I have some mountaintop experiences in serving God. And can I tell you that I've had some valleys. And some of you can leave and ask the people you came to church with, what was he talking about? Maybe they can explain it. I have been in places in my life I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know which way to turn. I've been places in my life that I have been hurt. I lost my dad. I worked with him for years and years and years. But I have had something to happen in my life that Bill, as much as I loved him, it didn't hurt me. And when he died, it didn't hurt hardly faze me because I had already been hurt. Anybody been hurt? Anybody been hurt real bad? Come on. It's got to be besides me, me, more than me and two or three. If you ain't, you're going to be. But I tell you what the Holy Ghost does. He will come to you when everybody else has left you and the spouse has left you and the children's forsaken you. He will come in and he will comfort you, my sister. That is part of his work. That's what he does. Joy, pull up what the Lord said about the Holy Ghost. I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Everybody else may leave you. Your friends may leave you. This one may leave you. But the Holy Ghost is here for the long deal. He will be with you even to the end of the world, even to the end of the age, even throughout eternity. That is part of the work he's done. He is more than speaking in tongues that we don't want to talk about. By the way, by the way, I, I've got to hasten on. You see this pair of shoes? I can't get my leg up like I used to, could. See that pair of shoes? I got news for you. It's got a shoestring and it's got a tongue. But I got news for you. These were not bought because somebody was looking for a tongue. I was looking for a pair of shoes. But the tongue came with the shoes. Amen. Y'all ain't getting restless out there, are you? Joy knows my messages most of the time start out a lot longer but end up a lot shorter. Here's what the Holy Ghost does as well. He quickens. Did you know the Holy Ghost is a spirit of action? And to quicken means to accelerate and to activate and to change and to hasten and to incite and to preanimate and to speed up and to stir up and wake up and to give or restore to life. The work of the Holy Ghost can be very much seen in connection with the life of death of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost was pretty much manifested. How about in his incarnation? Luke 1 and 35, the angel answered and said unto her, which is Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the house shall overshadow thee. Therefore, the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you, and when he comes upon you, he's going to quicken you, and he's going to accelerate, and he's going to activate, and he's going to change, and he's going to hasten, and he's going to insult. 
faint. He's going to speed up, stir up, wake up. And you know what? He's going to give life. How about at his baptism? Matthew 3 and 16. Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. How about in his temptation in Matthew 4 and 1? Then was led Jesus up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But how about this? How about after his resurrection? Listen to these words. 1 Peter 3 and 18. For Christ also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring uh, us to God, being put to death in the flesh. Come on, y'all. Read it. But quicken by the Spirit. When Jesus Christ died, the Holy Ghost was upon him and quickened him and brought him back to life. Hey, how many Christians do we have? Ephesians, Ephesians, I think she's going to pull it up. I think it's verse 1, chapter 2. You hath, come on, he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. A little bit further down, Joy, please, ma'am. Even when we were dead in sin, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. Did you know a sinner is dead to God and alive to the world? But do you know that when we surrender to God, come on, y'all, we are quickened by the Holy Ghost and we are made alive. Now we're dead to the world and we're alive to God. Oh, I man, I don't know what time it is, but I can tell you this. I remember one time when I dread the mornings. It was vanity of vanity, said the preacher. All was vanity. I had stayed out all night long. I now had climbed up the old four-inch cast iron sewer pipe, got on the roof, went into the bathroom, wonder, went to bed, lay down. Daddy's going to call me at 7.30. I said, you know what? There's got to be more to this. Amen. There's got to be more to this than what I am doing. But you know what? The Holy Ghost got a heart of, hold of my life. And you know what he did? He convicted me and he convinced me. And you know what he did? He converted me. Amen. And you know what? He has said, upon me, bless God, and he has comforted me, but he has resurrected me from the dead and gave me life. And John said that the thief come and put to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Amen. Sometimes, y'all, I, I don't feel good maybe physically, but I feel good in my spirit and in my mind. I got people wondering about me. Has it really got good sense? Yeah. Well, I know that's debatable. But he quickens. I like what else he does. He seals. In the apostolic salutation of the Apostle Paul to, to Ephesians, to Ephesians in 1 and 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, listen to this, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. And later in the same epistle, Paul said this in 4 and 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of of redemption. You see, y'all, not only does the Holy Ghost seal, He is the seal. Can I tell you what this means? It means three things. 
It means there is a finished transaction. John 17 and 1, these words spake, spake, it says, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said to the Father, and then in verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Jesus is hanging on the cross. John 19 and 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Even though that the Lord is still working on me. What he did at Calvary is finished. Can somebody say amen to that? But not only is it a finished transaction, it means ownership. You see, y'all, we are God's property. We are God's stamp. We are God's brand. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 6 and 19, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? in which ye have of God, ye are not your own. Verse 20, because ye are bought with a price. I don't know how that makes you feel, but I know how it makes me feel. I belong to God. I got a call. I was at the pool place for the hospital. Ronnie, would you mind coming to such and such area? Somebody has requested that you come. They want you to come and pray. I said, I'm such and such, but I'll be, I, you know, I try to get there. I'm trying to change the places and the names. But I arrive, and I walk into the room, and I'm not going to go into detail about what I was dealing with. How many is around a lot of evil <laughs> workers, wherever you may work? Me and you work at the same place. Put your hand down. I'm going to tell you what, y'all. We belong to God. And we are God's property. Security. I don't believe in eternal security. But us wholeness folks don't believe in security enough by God. Psalm 23 has six verses and it tries to give out six things. And the sixth thing in the sixth verse is this, of security. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, y'all, I am, I am one of his sheep. How many is a sheep? I am his friend. How many of his friends? This ain't all. Joy, it's up to you. But Malachi 3 says that we are even his jewels. We belong to God. You see where it said, Joy? Pull it up while I'm, while I'm moving on. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. I got a couple more things. Have y'all got time? The Holy Ghost reveals. What does he reveal? He reveals the love of God. Romans 5 and 5. Hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Do you, know, do you really want to know what the Holy Ghost reveals to us about the love of God? There's this. There is nothing that can separate us from it. Not what? Not tribulation, not distress, not persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl sword or death or life or angels or principalities or powers or things present, things to come, height, death. No other creature can separate us from the love of God. And he wants you to know that. But he wants you to know something else as well about God's love. It passeth all knowledge. I don't understand why God loves somebody like me and somebody like you. Here's another thing. He reveals to us the things that God has prepared for us. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, As it is written, eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, But God has revealed to them us, to us by his Spirit. But how about this? Anybody want to know a little bit about the future? 
Shame on you if you go into a horoscope. Shame on you if you go into a palm reader. If you want to know some things that's going to happen in the future, why don't you just get down and pray? And why don't you just get in God's Word? You know what, y'all? I can tell you some things about the future. Anybody want to know any things about the future? I can tell you the rapture is getting ready to take place. I can tell you the Lord's getting ready to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together and meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I can tell you this. I can tell you from Revelation 4 on to a certain point, I can tell you there's going to be a great tribulation upon the face of the earth like has never been before. Seven years, matter of fact. Anybody else want to know any more? I can tell you this, that when the world thinks they've got the Jews, the Jews cornered, anybody want to hear this? When they think they've finally got the Jews cornered and they're going to, give it, and they're going to make them give in, you know what? John, John says, I see heaven roll back as a scroll, and there's one riding on a white horse, and his name is called True, and his name is called Faithful, and his vesture looked like it had been dipped in blood. He ain't by himself riding on a white horse. The armies of heaven are with him, and you know what? He descends from heaven, and you know what he does? He touches the Mount of Olives, and they begin to split, and they begin to move into the fact that it changes the whole place geographically, and you know what the Jews do? They fall down on their face, and they say, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God, and even the Bible says that when he begins to fight for Israel, that the that's eye sockets of the human beings that they fall from their face and they're going to gather up their ornaments for, for months and for months and for months. Can anybody else want to know what's going to happen? And Jesus Christ is going to sit up his throne and he's going to rule and he's going to reign for a thousand years and the lamb's going to lay down with a lion. Anybody else want to know anything that's going to happen? And in a thousand years, that's going to be the battle of Gog and Magog, Gog and God's going to destroy them, bless God. Amen. And put the devil, amen, into the lake of fire. Anybody want to know anything else? And then what? That's going to be a new heaven and there's going to be a new earth and there's going to be a new people and there's going to be a unwound up this morning and there's going to be a new Jerusalem. There's going to be a new river flowing from the throne of God and we're going to live happily ever after. Anybody else want to know anymore? I'm about to move my way into camp meeting here. Only why? Because he's more than tongues. He signs you and seals you and reveals to you. If you think there's more than just tongues of the Holy Ghost, you have got a mighty shallow experience and a mighty shallow belief. Yes. I'm going to eat my baked chicken and lay down and go to sleep this afternoon. Amen. Somebody tell me what time it is. Don't say, don't matter. I want to know. Don't care. <laughs> Good gracious. I packed all into this. There's something else that's important. There is the witness of the Holy Ghost. Have you ever heard the preacher, and he said in this, to this morning, as he's proclaiming some truth, can I get a witness? In the Old Testament, it took the mouth to two or three witnesses to establish the truth. In the Gospel according to John 5, 33 through 47, there was the fourfold witness of Jesus. You anybody want to know what they are? John the Baptist bore witness. Raise your hand for John the Baptist. His works that he performed bear witness of who he was. The, the Father bore witness. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The scriptures bore witness. Did you know that there's the witness of that of the Holy Ghost of a believer that he is a son and that he is an heir? Romans 8 and 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Have you ever heard this? Let me come up to somebody. Are you saved? Amen. Yes. No, John, hold on a minute. I think so. You ain't going to say that. I hope so. Maybe so. There's a no-so. 
the Holy Ghost in us bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I don't care how many times you've gone down in water. You better have the witness of the spirit. And then you can get on, <laughs> get on down in the water. Y'all, this ain't a thing, so. I don't want to be lying on my deathbed and knowing that there's heaven and hell. Ronnie, you, you going to be all right? I hope so. I think so. Sister, I want to be able to look at my family and say, you know what? I know so because I said of the old count 40 some years ago, I've got the witness of the Spirit that I am a child of God. How about this? We even cry out, Abba, Father. If you come here for a simple sermon, I don't preach a whole lot of simple sermons. But that's not all. You're a child of God, and He's coming to you, but He's coming to you for a reason. Anybody like that? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Holy Ghost is just more for you just talk in tongues and shout a little bit once in a while. Matter of fact, I think some of y'all break out shouting, y'all scared you're going to scare somebody to death. Yeah, it probably will be. It'll probably be me. And John said, Hallelujah. <laughs> He used to have some young guys come pick me up when I was, I was married and had children. Just got saved. We used to go to farm life. Anybody know where farm life is? Play basketball there at school. Matter of fact, I told you my family was the Perrys, Jim and Gailey Perry, on my mama's side. And I remember coming approaching to the car, and they were just joking and said, you know what, we ought to gang up on him, and we ought to stick him in this ashtray. Do cars have ashtrays anymore? I don't know. And one of them said, you know what? If we do, he's got enough Holy Ghost in him that he's going to come out of that ashtray. <laughs> George is going to pull up one more verse. Have you ever been lost for words? Joy, hold it right there. Have you ever been lost for words? When I got that telephone call the other day, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what I'm dealing here with, Lord. I don't know what I'm going to run into. It hasn't been explained to me. And, and, and Lord, I kind of need to prepare myself. I want to tell you what the Lord says. He said, there's going to come a time that people are going to lead you and deliver you up. And, and you know what? look what he said. He said, don't worry. He said, don't take no thought. Matter of fact, the word in there is premeditate. Don't even premeditate what you're going to say. Don't even plan it out. He says, you know what? Because when you get there, somebody's going to stand up and speak for you and through you and in you. But whatsoever you shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak but the Holy Ghost that speaketh in you. You see, y'all, the Holy Ghost is that, but the Holy Ghost is a lot, a lot more, much more even than that. And the Holy Ghost is a lot more than what I tried to tell you this morning. Amen. How many has enjoyed being in the house of the Lord? I want you to stand, please. It should be about 10 after 12 now.